Good afternoon, everyone. My name is James Housefield. I'm an historian of art and design, and I teach in the design department here at UC Davis. It's uh, especially fitting then for me to have the opportunity to talk about a work of industrial design that is also the product of aesthetic craft. And I'm very happy to be following in the footsteps of its creator every day that I set foot on UC Davis campus. The work we're sharing today was made by William T. Wiley, who's known as one of the Davis Five, um, all of whom are represented in the exhibition here, and who lend a very significant visual arts heritage to the University of California system by way of UC Davis. I'd like to talk to you about three aspects of this relatively unassuming work in front of us. First, I'd like to talk to you about its title. It's by William T. Wiley, it's from 1972, and it's called Mount Analog. In addition to talking about that title, I'd like to discuss the conditions surrounding that title, and then third, refer to this, strangely perhaps, as an example of self-portraiture. So without any further ado, the title of this work is Mount Analog, and it's very directly taken from a novel by a French surrealist author named René Domal, this was first published in English in 1959. It was celebrated in San Francisco and internationally thanks to the works of the Evergreen Review who were fascinated by the works of Domal and others. So let me begin again with the words of Domal that opened this book. I would have preferred to tell you the whole story right now. Since that would take too long, here is the beginning. Possibly it is deceptive to speak of the beginning and end of a story when we never grasp anything but the middle portions. At the heart of the event was an encounter, however, and every encounter is a relative beginning. And this encounter, especially, contains a whole story in itself. Rather than an artwork, what we may have before us is an encounter. And if I may seize the encounter without touching the artwork, I'd like to retitle it for the next few minutes and call this William T. Wiley's pataphysical mug. Now, that first term, pataphysical, is the conditions surrounding this title to which I referred a moment ago. Pataphysics is a science. Pataphysics, no, is the science. Pataphysics is the science of all answers and no answers, created by the French author Alfred Jarry at the end of the 19th century. It fascinated Dada artists and authors and the surrealists after them. Among those fascinated by pataphysics was René Domain, who started a surrealist publication called Le Grand Jeu, The Great Game. Here is William T. Wiley's foray into The Great Game, and it's a response to another game begun by yet another follower of pataphysics, the artist Marcel Duchamp, who early in the 20th century created a new category of art by instituting the ready-made, in which an ordinary object could be repurposed for other means, bringing a new idea to the object at hand, as Duchamp himself said. Duchamp was a great influence on and inspiration for William T. Wiley and also for his very well-known UC Davis graduate student, Bruce Nauman, as the two of them bandied about the ideas of Duchamp amongst them, and especially were interested in Duchamp's possession of language as a tool for the contemporary artist of the 20th century to embrace. Duchamp's ready-made repurposing an everyday or industrially manufactured object are here at work in Mount Analog. The Mount Analog of the title is an impossible mountain, one which must exist because it cannot exist, the tallest mountain on Earth and yet never actually cited by anyone. The book by Domal is the chronicle of a great adventure to scale that mountain. To scale unattainable heights is a very valid philosophical endeavor. And I would wager that there's quite a bit of philosophy contained within the ink on paper that's inside here. Yet we can only read that philosophy one letter at a time. If this is a pataphysical mug, it is a Kerr jar, K-E-R-R, -R, yet that word sounds to our ears in William T. Wiley's wordplay, like Kerr, a simple dog. This is the portrait of the artist as a young dog, the portrait of the artist as a mason jar. This, in fact, is a portrait of the artist from two places, born in Bedford, Indiana, 
about an hour and a half from Muncie, Indiana, which made the lid on top here, which comes from another canning company altogether, from the Ball Canning Corporation. Indiana, and then the San Francisco glassworks that produce the Kerr glassware below, coming together in the, the body of William T. Wiley himself, coming from Indiana, traveling around and landing in California in the 1960s. In Bedford, Indiana, down in the hills of southern Indiana, one might readily find moonshine inside of a vessel such as this. And the same could have been said in 1972 at some of the parties near and around UC Davis and Hill Valley that William T. Wiley attended. The same certainly is said of the other great literary work by René Domau, A Night of Serious Drinking, which takes Plato's notion of the symposium at face value, the symposium being a drinking party. The Kerr Company was founded in 1903 as the Fermetic Fruit Jar Company. And William T. Wiley's own approach to art was to take that image of the hermetic wizard and seize it by the pant legs and pull at it like a cur biting at the leg of modern art. <laughs> this, then, is William T. Wiley, circa 1972, the greatest snapshot I can imagine of a man I've never seen, but who's staring me down from just behind me in the face on the wall that you see there. The letter G stares back at me backwards from inside this, and in conclusion, I'm reminded of the spiritual quest of René Domal, rather in, whether in serious drinking or in climbing a mountain that does not exist, reminded of the spirituality of the ready-mades of Marcel Duchamp that give a new identity to ordinary objects, reminded of Duchamp's quest to capture the secular air, the profane air of Paris, in a bottle, seal it, and bring it back to his New York patron, Walter Ehrensberg, or his French follower, Ben Gautier, a fluxus artist of the 1960s to the present day, who repeatedly in the 1960s created a work of art like the empty wine bottle with a label that simply read G-O-D, affixed to it. Inside that empty bottle could be God, to be exhibited in a museum, to be bought and sold if you wish, or if we follow doctrine, God is everywhere. For the Kerr Company, God was their co-pilot. 10% of their earnings went back to charitable Christian ministries and other works. And a little pamphlet inside of the Kerr canning jars admonished the buyers to do the same by tithing with their own good deeds in their lives. Whether God is in the day details or God begins with that letter G right there, I know not. I will leave this simply as William T. Wiley's pataphysical mug, the unattainable reaches of a mountain that must exist because it cannot exist. Thank you.